Welcome in this video, we are going to implement the great Planoxal's paper where we are going to train it on the synthetic ligosine and these are the results we will get by the end of this video. Um, I will put the link of this code in the, um, in the description. If you use it, uh, please leave a star so that gives some traction to this repository and also leave a thumbs up to this video. So let's dive directly into the implementation. That don't forget to subscribe if it's not already done. Uh, we're going to use PyTorch uh, as usual to do the implementation and use a few other packages as helpers such as NumPy and TQDM or Matplotlib uh, to plot the results. So let's dive directly to the um, PlanOxels uh, implementation. So we can start by uh, creating a function uh, that will evaluate the uh, spherical, uh, this spherical uh, function. So it takes uh, as input k, so some coefficients that are parameterizing this spherical function on d, which is uh, the direction, uh, so the input of the uh, of the parametric function. So from d, we extract the x, y, z components, and then we can feed them uh, directly to the. Uh, we can directly evaluate the function. So it's retrieved from uh, Google, uh, so from a repository from Google. So thank you to them. Uh, basically, this is you can read a bit more about spherical harmonics, but this is basically the. Um, uh, I think this is the function of the degree tree. Um, well, it's just a suite for the implementation of the formula. When this is done, we can move on to implementing the North model. So that will predict those coefficients k. Uh, so basically, it's as if it was predicting a function. Uh, it can be seen kind of as a hyper network. Well, not really, but well, it predicts a function. So it predicts uh, the parameters of the function, and then we can evaluate the function. So the North model is two parameters, n, which is the size of the voxel grid. So we are using 256, which gave the worst results on the paper. If you want better results, you can double that. And we can also take the scale of the grid. So basically, uh, 1.5 means 1.5 meters. We can call the constructor of the superclass, and then we can uh, start initializing the model. So we can start by creating the voxel grid. So we create a 3D grid of size n by n by n. And in each, uh, in each cell, we store 28 values. So we have 27 uh, coefficients, so k, the uh, spherical harmonic coefficients, plus one, which is the density at any point in, um, in space. Uh, and I've decided to uh, initialize those parameters to one in minus two, um, which, uh, which was great. Maybe there are better ways to initialize that to get better results. Once this is done, we can implement the fraud function. So first, we, um, so the fraud function is taking as input uh, position on a, a direction. Uh, first, we create um, a data structure to store the uh, color and the density that will predict uh, for those uh, for those location, uh, well, for those pairs of location and direction. We create a mask. We'll only uh, predict uh, color and density for the points that are within uh, the voxel grid defined by the model. Uh, and for the points that are outside, we will just uh, assign a color and density of zero by default. So once we've computed the, uh, the points that are within uh, the, uh, the voxel, we can move on to do the, uh, the prediction. So first we, uh, we query the voxel grid at the uh, location, so at the location x. Uh, and then from those uh, extracted value, TMP, we can extract uh, first the density, uh, which is a, a single value per, uh, per point. And then we can also extract k, the spherical harmonic coefficients. Once this is done, we can uh, call the, um, the function that we've created before to evaluate the spherical function. We give uh, the coefficient k that the neural network has predicted on the direction associated to those coefficients. And then we get a color for those points and we can return the color on the density. Then we can move on to uh, our testing function. Maybe it's a bit early to implement it. Uh, we could have kept that for the end, but let's dive into its implementation. So it's taking as input HN on HF, which are the uh, near bones and far bones uh, of the... Um, so for each ray, we need to do a volumetric uh, integration, and these are the bones of the integral. We take as input that the data, uh, a chunk size, because we cannot do the uh, render uh, one image uh, at a time directly on the GPU. It will uh, produce uh, uh, out-of-memory issue, uh, unless you have a good uh, GPU with, uh, with high VRAM. Uh, and then we uh, give the image index. So from the data set, we want to render a specific image, the number of bins, uh, the number of bins we want to use to do volumetric integration, H and W, the size of our image. Uh, here, I'm just focusing on the implementation. I assume you have some knowledge about NERF. Uh, if it's not the case, I have a course about NERF uh, on Udemy, and I will put the link in the description. Would you be interested?
So first from the data set, we can query the origin and the direction of the image run through a renderer based on image index. And then we can uh, do, uh, move on to the rendering part. So we uh, we iterate over a chunk of, uh, of rays. So we get the uh, origin and direction of that chunk. Then we do a rendering. So we render only that chunk. And then uh, we uh, little by little Little by little, we append the uh, regenerated value to the data uh, list. And at the very end, we uh, put all, uh, we put everything together to generate the image. And then we can uh, we can show the image and save it uh, inside this repository, well, inside this uh, directory image. Okay, now uh, let's move on to rendering. Maybe it's more interesting. So we can uh, implement this uh, compute accumulated transmittance function. Uh, it's just uh, well, it's really standard with NORF. Again, I will not dive into the implementation. Uh, I think it's maybe equation three or four in the initial NORF paper. Uh, it's the term TI that uh, that you need. Maybe it's uh, maybe we can retrieve it in this paper. Um, okay, it's this term uh, TI, which is the. Uh, how much light is transmitted through ray error to sample i. So basically it's the uh, accumulated transmittance. You see the sum, uh, basically this is what uh, this function is uh, computing. Uh, once this is done, we can move on to implementing the rendering function. So it's taking as input a model. So basically a 3D representation of the world, some rays, so their origin and direction. And basically the rendering uh, function will uh, compute, okay, for this ray, uh, or is it, or do the world uh, render this ray what is the color when this ray interacts with the world and this is what this function will uh, produce. We take uh, again HN on HF. So be because we're doing volumetric rendering, we need those parameters, the bones of the integral, of the volumetric integral, and the number of bins for doing the uh, volumetric integration. So the first thing to do is to sample T. So sample some points along the line between HN on H, uh, HF, so the, the near and far bones. And because if we do that uh, deterministically, uh, during training for each ray will always sample the same point um, and therefore always query the, the model at the same point so what we'll do we'll perturb those points add some noise and we'll do what is called perturb sampling so basically we're doing a bit of no we're adding a bit of noise so that uh, we are sampling uh, uniformly the space during training and not always at the same point once this is done we can compute x so when we have computed t um, we can compute the uh, 3D location of those sample uh, sample sample points. Let, let's let's call it that way. So we compute the uh, where the ray will be at time t. Um, so that gives us 3D locations. We can uh, reshape the ray direction and expand its uh, expand it so that it has the same uh, shape as x. And then we can uh, call the model to get a prediction for this pair of x on direction. So that gives us a color and a density, and then we can uh, we can move on to uh, computing the rendering equation. So the volumetric the uh, yeah, volumetric uh, rendering equation. Um, so yeah, first we compute alpha, uh, the weights, uh, and then the the, col the final color is a weighted sum. Uh, and then what we can do as well is to uh, add this regularization for white background. So this is because uh, again I will not dive into that. This will explain uh, in a uh, in my video about InfoNorf or in my course uh, on Udemy. But basically, because our background is white, uh, we need to do some regularization. So now we can move on to uh, the training function. Now it's just standard uh, machine learning. So we have, we have uh, as input a model uh, that is uh, an n.module. So yeah, a neural network. But well, it, now it's not no longer a neural network because it's this NORF model. But it can be seen like an in-run network model in PyTorch with an optimizer to optimize the parameters of this model. Uh, potentially, we can have a scheduler to uh, decay the learning rate over time, a data loader, the device on which, on which we want to train, and then, of course, HN, AHF, number of bids, the rendering parameters, and the number of, of epochs for which we want to train. So we can iterate over the number of epochs, and then during each epoch, we can iterate over the data set. So we iterate over the data loader, we get the origin direction for each ray, and then they are going through a pixel value. And then what we can do, we can do a prediction calling the rendering function. So it's really like a supervised machine learning. Our model gives us a prediction, and then we compute the loss between the predicted value and the ground truth. Uh, in this case, we're using the MSC loss. 
And then what we can do, we can uh, call the optimizer to update the weight of the, uh, of the model. And if we have a scheduler, we can use scheduler.step to update the running rate over time. Uh, and then we can put all our building, building block together. So first we uh, define the device, we'll train it on, uh, on the GPU. Then we load the, the, the data set. So I've already formatted the data uh, for NERV so that it's much easier and it keeps the implementation short. Um, if you're interested in all those uh, data uh, of on all those files that were generated, I will soon make a video about it. So do not uh, forget to uh, activate the, the bell so that you are uh, you are notified uh, every time I uh, I produce a new video. So once the once the data are, are loaded, we can uh, create the uh, North model. We can create an optimizer. We we'll use Adam. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, you can see that the learning rate is pretty high because in this case, we are directly optimizing the, uh, the voxel grid uh, rather than uh, neural network rate. So usually when it's uh, in, in such scenarios, we use higher learning rate. Uh, we can also create this scheduler to decay the, um, the learning rate by two every, uh, well, at, ma at two, four and eight epochs, we'll decay the learning rate by two. And then we can uh, we can create a data loader and call the training function. Once training is done, we can do uh, we can test and produce some rendering. So I'm only rendering the uh, test image uh, 0, 60, 120, and 180 that I've shown uh, pr uh, in the introduction of this video. But you could uh, change this loop to render more uh, more frames if you're interested. Um, okay, so that concludes this video. I really hope it uh, will be helpful to you. If it was, uh, leave the thumbs up on our subscribe for more content related to machine learning. Thank you.